Good morning, New Hope. This Friday, I want to open by sharing a really important picture from uh, Jesus himself. In Luke 22, as he introduced the Lord's Supper to his disciples, he said something to them as he introduced the wine. He said, this wine is my blood, and in it forms the new covenant. That new covenant connected us by his blood, not only to the Father, but by his Spirit to one another. You see, it, it is in that new covenant we have the ability to become the New Testament church. And God has always been about covenant. You see, covenant is where God makes a promise to us that he intends to keep. In in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, uh, you find my life verses, actually. Um, he said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And you can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not have to fear what man will do unto me. What God was saying in that was that God was making a covenant to us, that he was always going to be present, and by his power, he was always going to bring to pass the things that he had said he would do. This should give us great hope and trust that we, as benefactors of God's covenant to us, the one formed in Jesus' blood, is that he is going to do it, and we, as the other party, the other part of that have a responsibility to just receive what he has done and then because of his goodness be his emissaries be his ambassadors his missionaries to the rest of the world to tell the world of what he has done that is our responsibility in the covenant that we have to god so we have seen god pouring out his spirit on our corner of new hope and central pike for the past three weeks uh, what has happened in three weeks i cannot take credit for and i'm so humbled and honored to sit in the seat and just get to continue to beg god to move and try to stay out of his way i'm just asking god how do i best discern and manage what you are doing so that the gospel continue and the kingdom advance and you get all honor and glory because you're the one due credit as people are saved, as people are baptized, as we see hundreds of people drawn to this place who want to join, who want to become a member of New Hope. Well, let me introduce a new thought, because I think it's a stronger word. I think it's the biblical word. I think it's the biblical thing that Jesus introduced, and it's what God continues to do through his church. We are in covenant not only with the Father through Jesus' blood, but we're in covenant with one another. So I want to introduce the thought of not membership, but covenant partnership. And in it, we each have a responsibility. Anyone who would come to this place and say, I want to become a member has a responsibility as much as the church has a responsibility to them. So on August 11th, I'm going to introduce covenant class from 6.30 on August 11th to 6.30 the next three Wednesday nights after that. We're going to take four weeks to discuss what it means to be a covenant partner of New Hope. We're going to talk about where New Hope has been where New Hope is, and where New Hope is going. We're going to share in one another's stories and see what portion and what part you play in coming alongside as a partner in said covenant to advance the gospel from hermitage to all ends of the earth. The reason I believe in this so much is because this is what we saw happen in the first century. In fact, in the first century, People carried with them pouches of salt wherever they went. They would go on these long journeys and they would carry with them salt because uh, it served a myriad of functions. They needed it, much like we do, to flavor their food. It was an additive. They would need it for ointment because they didn't have modern medicine. They would use it to keep their meat preserved because they didn't have electricity or, or refrigeration. So it, it served many functions, but when it came to the issue of covenant, it was expected by law that they would take their pouch of salt and take some of their salt out and exchange it into their covenant partner's pouch and vice versa. And those two were now in covenant with one another. It says that if they were at any point in their life having a falling out or decided that they wanted to break covenant, that they were required to find a central location with a table and both members had to be present, take out their pouch, empty its contents onto the table, and each member had to take back his or her original property. Now, if you've got that picture in your head, you'd realize that, that that picture and that responsibility, that requirement is impossible. And the reason that was the requirement is because all those in the first century understood and were reminded by this expectation that all covenants are eternal. So if you've been here since you were born at New Hope, I want to invite you to covenant class. 
If you've just come in in the last three weeks and you're going, I want to join, I want to invite you to covenant class because it doesn't matter whether you're new or you've been here a long time. We're all a part of this story called New Hope. We are all a part of becoming the body of New Hope. And no matter whether you have been on this journey for a long time or you're just joining this journey or you're about to leave New Hope and go be a part of another part of the world, another part of a, a covenant with another church somewhere else locally. Here's what I want to encourage you in. New Hope in this present time will always be in covenant. We're always going to be a part of each other's story. So from now into eternity, we are going to be a covenant. Con we're going to have a covenant connection to one another as partners in the gospel. Isn't that amazing? And so I want to encourage you. Mark your calendars. Come August 11th, we're going to start covenant class. We're going to walk for four weeks and we're going to discover what it means to be a covenant partner at New Hope and take serious the responsibility that we are going to walk into eternity together, whether we have uh, 10 days or 100 years together as the people of New Hope here in Hermitage. So we, I love you. I, I thank you. I hope you're excited about that. Until August 11th, I'm anticipating meet with you just this Sunday at 1030. We're going to see God do great things. He's continued to move. So beg for God to stir in your heart and mine and in our midst as we carry the gospel from this corner of Hermitage to all of the earth. And mark those calendars. Don't forget August 11th. I love you. I'll see you this Sunday. Have a good day.